Hi everybody and welcome to this fly tying tutorial. I appreciate the view as always and I'll get right into this pattern. The pattern that I'm going to be tying today is the number one selling pattern in the country. It is known as the Copper John. I'm going to be tying the original Copper John pattern. Um, I want to start off by telling you a little bit about this pattern. I've never met the creator, John Barr, personally, um, but I have read one of his books and it's, an, it's a really great one. It's called Barr Flies. It's written by uh, John Barr. And it's basically how to tie and fish the Copper John, the Bar Merger, and a bunch of his other patterns. Uh, it's a great book simply because if you use it as a resource, you take a look at the history of the patterns, and he also shows you some step-by-step -step, uh, pictures. It really puts everything together for you. So to tell you a little bit about the Copper John, um, first of all, it's something I really stress with a lot of tires. Whenever John sat down to tie this pattern, he didn't just tie it once, go out and fish it, and it worked. It didn't work like that at all. In fact, as I'm tying this pattern for you, I'll mention some of the, the pieces of it that I've read in that he started with a certain material and he may have switched it out with something else. For instance, the tail right now is Biot's, but whenever he first started tying it, he was actually using Hungarian partridge. At least that's what he mentions in the book. There's some other like neat little stories about it. For instance, whenever you look at the Copper John, aside from how heavy it is and aside from all the, um, the ultra wire that you see on it, most fly tires and most fishermen are drawn to that that head that just really seems to just take off that the, the wing case and the epoxy on top yet to him that's really not a major part of the fly sure it can represent a couple different things but the one quote that I really like from the book is that that epoxy on top really is just curb appeal and I think for a lot of tires we look at it as curb appeal that it's really nothing more than that and in some of the patterns that I fish I won't have that on there. However, because this is the original Copper John, I do want to ensure that I'm tying it with that with that piece. Um, I want to tell you a couple other little pieces about it. Um, for the original Copper John, uh, John recommends a two extra long shanked hook. I'm going to be using one of Allen Fly Fishing's hooks. It's the S402BL. Um, to ma it matches up perfectly. It's a two x extra long shank, and it's a barbless, so it's really easy to put that bead on. Uh, a couple other little pieces of information. When uh, John first created this pattern, he intended it to be fished really heavy on the bottom. He almost wanted it to be fished directly below a hopper, so it was kind of that hopper dropper. Um, except it's not necessarily a dropper. He calls it the hopper copper. And in fact, um, in this book, if you want to read more about that, uh, John goes on to talk about the HCD, which stands for the hopper copper dropper. So you have three flies on there at one time. Uh, he also recommends some of, of the better, you know, you know, copper johns to be fishing. And his recommendations are to carry it in sizes 14, 16, and 18 in four different colors for each of those, which are copper, red, chartreuse, and black. So if you're a beginning tire and you're really just trying to narrow it down, stick with that copper. Start to figure out how to tie it. Start tying it in sizes 14, 16, and 18. That's not a lot of patterns to really start to develop, but then you can add some more colors into your assortment as you get going. So without any further ado, I'm going to get into the actual fly tying tutorial for uh, John Barr's uh, Copper John. This is the original Copper John. All right, let's start tying this original Copper John. I'm going to be tying it in the color black. So I will be um, just kind of stressing that as I'm going through some of the materials. For starters, as I mentioned, I have the S402BL uh, two extra long shank from Allen Fly Fishing. I have a tungsten bead in place, and next I'm going to tie on some .015 lead wire. John actually represents, or I'm sorry, John actually uh, mentioned specifically putting in 13 wraps of this lead wire. Do you need to put 13? Of course not, but you can get pretty close there. And the reason you can get so many in is because you're going to be hiding some of this lead wire directly under that bead. Now when you get to this point, you can always just pinch the lead wire off with your thumb. If you have a pair of dull scissors that you use for cutting wires, you can also take those and just simply do a couple trims. Get that wire out of the place, or out of the way. You want to bend it a little bit, and then you can just simply push it directly underneath the bead. That's the best way to kind of get it out of the way. Okay, once you have that under the bead, I might grab my thread. And I'm going to be using some 8 dot black tying thread for this pattern. I'm just going to keep pushing that lead wire forward towards the bead and just kind of lock this stuff all in place. Okay. I'll go over this once or twice, but I'll actually be doing that a little bit later. Next, I'm, directly, I'm going to go directly to the back. 
I'm going to be tying in my biots. I'll be using some black biots for this pattern. Uh, again, do you have to use black biots? Absolutely not. That's what's recommended for this pattern. But if you remember, whenever um, uh, John Barr first tied this, he was using Hungarian partridge at the time. So I'm just going to grab some black biots, though, since this is his pattern. I'm going to try to do it as close to the original to maintain integrity. We had trim two of them away. Now, for experienced tires, it's pretty easy for them to grab these two biots, uh, separate them via the hook, and then simply put them in place after you have them separated, lock them, put a couple wraps, and have them tied off. Now, I do know that not everyone who watches these videos uh, will be an experienced tire, so I will show you kind of an easier way to do this if this is one of the first times you're tying this pattern. So you'll grab one of these biots, you'll place it on, and you're going to try to measure it to make sure the tip to the where you, the tie-on point will go up to about the bead. So you're going to make it about that length. You can just hold it in place, kind of measure it, put in a couple wraps, double check its length. To me, that's just a little bit long, so I'm just going to back it up just a hair. And then lock it in. Once I have one locked in, then I can go with the other one. Do the same thing. I can kind of line it up tip by tip. But again, you can just put in a couple loose wraps. Say, oh, you know what? It's not exactly perfect. Kind of wiggle it around. Make sure they're both about the same length. And then you can firmly lock them in place. And you do want to ensure that these tails are really firmly locked in place for this pattern. Once you have them locked in place, you can just trim the butt ends. So if you are a beginning tire, don't be afraid if you have to do that, those types of things. If you see another tire doing it a different way and you don't feel like you're to that level yet, you don't be don't be afraid. Uh, you, you shouldn't be as a beginning tire or an intermediate tire because this can be a tougher pattern. All right, next I'm going to grab some brassy size black ultra wire. I might cut a significant uh, piece of this. These uh, copper johns are so heavy, which is one of the main reasons they catch uh, so many fish. So, you know, you are going to go through a lot of this ultra wire as you start tying these in the recommended uh, uh, sizes and colors. So to tie in this ultra wire, John Barr recommends placing it just up to the lead wire and tying off there. That way you'll have a smooth transition point between the lead wire and the ultra wire right here. That's one of the, the most common mistakes on this pattern is that you can really get this, this transition point either too big, too small, and, um, and it really just seems to frustrate some tires. Now, if you want to do a different method, you can simply pull, put this wire in the whole way up, and then it'll just be a, a little easier for you to, to kind of transition that thread up. I'm going to go with the recommended. So I'm just going to place this ultra wire on top so it basically will stop um, directly at that lead wire or around the lead wire. I'm just going to lock this in place, go up, I'm going to come back, and then I want to ensure that I go the whole way back to where I want this ultra wire beginning. So I want to go back nearly as far as possible. Once I go back that far, then I'm just going to kind of take a look at the pattern. I don't want to put too many wraps uh, at the back of this piece. I want to get them really close to this transition area and then start to build them up directly in front of the transition area. I want it to be a smooth taper as you go up uh, this abdomen. And I do want it to build a little bit thicker as you get closer to the thorax. I'm going to just go back, just help that transition just a little bit more, and then come back forward to where my tie-off point will be for this ultra wire. All right, for the ultra wire, um, as I make my, my, my turns and as I lock this in place, I want to pull down firm with each one. Not necessarily aggressive, but firm is the word for it. I want to try to ensure that these wraps are kept to, uh, close to each other as possible. And as I start to near the thorax, I'm going to go a little bit past the typical tie-off point. I'm adding a little bit more weight to it, which is not a bad thing. But I really believe that building up the thorax a little bit is a great thing whenever it comes to these nymphs. Okay, I'm going to grab a pair of sharp scissors, cut off there, kind of bend that little tip down. I don't want that poking up with anything. All right, now I'm going to take my thread, just wrap back a little bit. 
to about right there. So that's where I'm going to be starting my thorax. So uh, John Barr recommends using Pearl Flashaboo. I do have Pearl Flashaboo to use as part of the wing case. However, I'm going to go with some holographic uh, tinsel instead. It's a size medium. It just gives a lot more flash, and I really do like that flash component. Do I think that catches more fish? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, does it look a little better? In my opinion, yes. That's why I'm going to use this. He will recommend this holographic flash on some of his other patterns that are very similar to this Copper John. Uh, for instance, I believe the Tungsten uh, Copper John recommends this. But, you know, for this pattern, I'm going to use it. Whenever you're tying in this holographic tinsel, you want to ensure that it's just going straight back down the hook shank. Okay, next, because I do have, uh, this is going to be the black uh, Copper John. I have a piece of black thin skin. Let me, I'll show you what this strip looks like. Let me zoom out just a hair. So this is the black strip of thin skin. This is a newer one. You can see I've cut um, down a couple sections with a, a straight pair of scissors. Uh, if you have a paper cutter, really simple to just put this in your paper cutter, uh, cut out a bunch of strips at once, then you have them just ready to go. All right, let me zoom back in for you. All right, I already have a little strip cut out. My strip's not too wide. I'm going to place this directly on top of the... Um, that tinsel, and I want the butt end of it, the butt end of this thin skin, basically nearly touching that tungsten bead. I don't want it touching the whole way. I do want to have a little bit of room for tying off, but I nearly want it going the whole way there. Then finally, I'll wrap back again to that far back point. Then I might go and grab some uh, peacock fibers. I really love to use some of the fibers around the eye. They really add a lot of bushiness, though their colors aren't necessarily nearly as that, that peacock iridescent color that uh, some tires might be used to. For that reason, I'm just going to grab a, uh, you know, a bag that I have lying around full of peacock feathers. I might pull a few of them out. And like a lot of tires, I tend to be very particular when it comes to using peacock. Sometimes I'll pull out 50 feathers before I find the ones that I want. So as I go through, I like to make sure that they have a really, you know, great amount of color. For instance, this one right here, I really like. I may pull that one out to the side. This piece is a little thin. I just don't love it. I put that one to the side. I might use that on a smaller copper john. This little piece here, I like it. It's got a decent length. I might set that one on top. I try to pull out one or two more. This piece here is a little lengthier, but it also has some shine to it, so I'm going to use that one. So I'm just going to use three feathers. I'm going to take those three feathers, which are all different lengths. I'm just going to line them up. I'm going to trim them so their tips are all relatively the same length. Then I'm going to tie them in by the tip. I'm going to ensure that as I tie them in, I'm going to put them in. I'm going to tie them into a spot where I don't have to worry about trimming them. So I'm going to tie them in right like this. Just lock them. Then I don't have to worry about trimming those butt ends. So my tie back, make sure it's to a starting point that I like, go back forward, and advance my thread to the tie-off point. I'm going to grab these three peacock fibers, start wrapping forward. And I might butt them up as close to that bead as possible. I only need a couple uh, thread wraps to really lock them in place. I'm going to trim them, and then I'm nearly complete with the fly. However, we're going to add some legs to this pattern. Let me zoom out and give you a peek at this hen saddle that I have. This is a beautiful hen saddle. If you look at it, you probably love the color, except you might notice, like, hey, it's almost got a honey color to it. That is not a bad thing. I'm going to show you why here in a second. So I'm just going to pull one of these fibers that's got the honey color tip. Let me zoom in to show you what, how I'm going to take care of this. So once I have this, this tip, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out that honey section. So I'm going to just take them, take them from the back. I want to make sure they're lined up relatively even. I'm just going to trim that little section away. So I'm left with a little V. Now if you notice the tips will be, it may, and on this case, my tips are still just a little bit of that honey color. Can I take those out? <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, I can, but I'm going to leave those in. I really like that, that, that transition, so that, that color piece. Then I'm going to next pull some of the fibers down from the bottom of the feather until I get to about a section of, of um, the amount of fibers that I'd like, the amount of feathers. That's about all I'm going to want on this. I probably have a few too many, but I want to ensure that it's standing out. I'm just going to take a couple more of those off. 
That's all, those are all the, the fibers that I need. I mean, I trim, and I'll show you what I'm left with. So I'm left with a little V that looks like this. Now, the best part about that is that I still have more of the feather. I can do that again and get at least two or three out of each feather. So I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to take these tips, and I'm going to place them to about the length that, where I want them to go. So I want them just going nearly to the hook point, maybe a little bit past it. I'm going to hold them in place with my right hand, and I'm going to grab them with my left so that the butt fibers are sticking straight up. I'm just going to make a couple loose wraps. I'm not pulling tight, and I want to just check the length. If the length is, you know, is, is looking okay to you, if it's the desired uh, degree, if it's that desired length, you can lock them in. If it's not, you can always take them, pull them a little bit longer since you're just putting in some, um, some looser wraps. You can still move them around for the most part. For instance, on this side, I just don't love how they're looking yet, so I'm just going to twist them just a hair so it looks like that now. Then I'm going to, again, hold them tight, put a couple more locking wraps in, grab my scissors, and get rid of this butt section. Okay, once I have that out of the way, then I'm going to pull my thin skin and my, um, my piece of holographic tinsel over. I want to ensure that that holographic, holographic tinsel is in the center, just like that. Once it is, I'm going to take my left hand, pinch everything down with my right, pull the thread over, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all I'm going to need. Again, I'll look over from the top, ensure that it's centered, lift my thin skin, pull it back, place one wrap in front of it, now it's locked in place. I'll put a half hitch, now I know nothing's going to go anywhere. I have my rounded scissors, typically I cut like this, if you notice in any of these videos. In this case, because I want to cut around the bead, I'm going to... Inver uh, I'm going to invert them, cut down, so I got as, uh, rid of as much of that, that thin skin as possible. I don't have to worry about making any other wraps, it's all locked in place. Finally, I'm just going to whip finish. Now as a tire, this is typically where I will stop. I'll use head cement, but for the most part, this is how I will fish the pattern. However, for those of you Copper John fans out there, if you remember, um, on the Copper John, it's really known for, whenever you see it, you have a little piece of glue on top. That's a five-minute uh, five minute epoxy. There's some great products out there now um, that you can use other than the five-minute epoxy. Um, the one that I'm going to use today is put out there by the original Super Glue. So let me show you what this looks like. This is a glass glue, uh, and it's UV cured which is really nice because it cures in literally five to 10 seconds. It's quick. Um, the key with that, in my opinion, is the UV light. Uh, I did a little bit of research on these UV lights and I found there's an actual range of light that you need. If you have the correct range, it cures it like nearly instantly. Unfortunately, I'm like that little kid that I just don't believe in. And so instead of holding the light on it for about five seconds, I keep the light on it for around 10 to 15 seconds. And even then, I look at it and think to myself, there's no way it's cured. And I'm just like that, that guy that walks by the wet paint sign. I just have to touch it to make sure. So I'm going to place a little bit of this glue on it. The applicator head's not necessarily the finest, but it's really easy to use. So I'm just going to unscrew this. You'll see a drop will start to appear. I'm just going to place a little bit on, a little bit more, and probably get one more nice size drop on there. Cover the bead just a hair. Once I have that, I might pick up my UV light and hit it. Right now, it is cured. But, like I told you, I am just not a believer. I don't know what it is. So I'm going to keep it on there for another five seconds. Hit it from a couple different angles. And, alright, I won't waste your time because you know it's cured. So, hopefully I'll get it through my head that it's cured as well. Now I have the, the finished original Copper John. This is in the color black. Uh, this is an absolutely deadly pattern. I'm, I'm tying this in size 14. You can tie these the whole way down to 20, 22 uh, if you want to represent the betas as well. 
I'll be using this early season. Uh, it represents stoneflies and some other darker nymphs out there, and this pattern will get directly down to the bottom. You can tie it with a black bead, um, and again, don't be afraid to vary it. For instance, um, if you remember, I tied with thin skin. Whenever John Barr initially started tying this pattern, he was using turkey for the wing case. Uh, the Hungarian partridge he used for the tail. He also used partridge for these legs. So can you vary it? Absolutely. Don't be afraid to change it up. This, in, in his opinion right now, is this is the way he'd like this pattern to be tied. Will he change it in five years? <laughs> Maybe. And can you change it right now? Absolutely. So I'd like to give John Barr a little bit of uh, the credit for this pattern. And that is the finished Copper John. Um, I will also thank Alan Fly Fishing uh, for the, this hook. This is the 402 BL. It's a two extra long uh, shank. Barbless, just a perfect hook to tie uh, this pattern with. I appreciate all of the, uh, the views that you guys have been giving me out there. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page, or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody.